opportunity to feel the burn with the latest workout trends in Korea. Gangnam Insider's Picks, Sunday on CNA. This program is brought to you by the Gangnam Goo Office. This is Asia Now. It's 12 p.m. in Singapore and Hong Kong, 9.30 in New Delhi and 11 o'clock in Jakarta. I'm Lok Su at this hour. Australia's state of Victoria going back into lockdown. It's fourth since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, this time for seven days. Authorities are calling it a short, sharp circuit breaker to allow contact traces to get ahead of a growing coronavirus outbreak. China accuses the U.S. of politicizing the origins of COVID-19 after President Biden tells intelligence agencies to redouble efforts into their investigations, raising fresh questions about a leak involving laboratory in the Chinese city of Wuhan. And Cyclone Yaz weakens after the storm makes landfall on India's eastern coast. Authorities in West Bengal reporting up to 10 million people being affected. Australia has placed its second most popular state of Victoria under another snap lockdown, this time for a week starting midnight, as Melbourne City faces a surge in COVID-19 infections. Acting State Premier James Molino said evidence is growing that officials are dealing with a highly infectious B1617 variant, first detected in India. Authorities also blamed hotel quarantine failures and a slow vaccine rollout for this latest outbreak. This is the fourth time the government has put the Victoria state under a lockdown since the pandemic started. Mr Molino described it as a circuit breaker designed to allow contact traces to get on top of cases. The new restrictions will see a ban on public gatherings. Residents are permitted to leave their homes only for essential reasons. Uh, these include getting vaccinated. Most students will move to remote learning. Victoria early this morning reported 12 new cases, 11 from Melbourne. To prevent further contagion, Prime Minister Scott Morrison is urging all who are eligible to get vaccinated. There are ample vaccines um, for those who will come forward and receive those vaccines in Victoria. And our simple message to you, to, to them is, is to please come forward and do that. We'll have more on Australia's inoculation drive and why officials are blaming this latest outbreak on vaccine hesitancy. The vaccine rollout has been fraught with difficulties from the very beginning for Australia. So already since this latest outbreak, we're starting to see vaccination hubs in Victoria getting busier. So it seems to have actually pushed more people to get vaccinated, which is what authorities want to see. We heard earlier today from Acting Premier James Merlino that had more Victorians actually been vaccinated in this case, then we may not be potentially facing another lockdown like we are now. So that could have really changed the situation. The issue that we're dealing with in terms of the vaccination drive is it's not just a slow rollout, but we're also seeing increasing hesitancy among the population to get vaccinated. And then in addition to that, complacency. So we have people who are saying, well, if we don't have many cases of COVID in Australia, then what's the point in getting vaccinated? There's no real urgent need. So that is definitely something that authorities hope the latest outbreak will change that sense of complacency. Well, that was Brianna Piazza outlining reasons for criticising of the central government. Our criticism over the central government's hotel quarantine system has been growing and calls are getting louder for officials to build more fit-for-purpose isolation facilities. All of the recent outbreaks in Australia have been linked to hotel quarantine failures and that's because health experts say hotels are not ideally designed to quarantine people for COVID-19 and that's because of the risk of aerosol spread. That is how we're seeing the virus escape from hotel quarantine. People who return from overseas who aren't infected but end up getting infected because the person staying next door to them in the corridor, uh, they're spreading the infection through the corridor and into their hotel 
hotel rooms. So that is what has authorities, uh, particularly across the states, concerned. Uh, many are calling on the federal government to build more uh, fit-for-purpose quarantine facilities. Uh, currently, it is the states that are running the hotel quarantine facilities. Uh, and basically, what we're hearing is that experts are saying that uh, we can expect more and more outbreaks like this to happen in Australia. A Chinese media are making light of U.S. President Joe Biden's efforts to get a definitive answer on the origins of COVID-19. He's asking U.S. intelligence agencies to report to him within 90 days on whether the new coronavirus first emerged in China from an animal source or from a lab accident. This is the second report Mr. Biden has sought after the first was inconclusive. The editor of Communist Party paper Global Times called Mr. Biden's move a blockbuster suspense movie, saying the ending should be in, uh, found instead in Fort Detrick's bio lab. Chinese state media have in the last year raised questions about whether about what they claim was an outbreak in 2019 of a mystery respiratory illness in Virginia, an hour's drive away from that lab. The Chinese embassy in the U.S. also calling out President Biden for politicizing the origins of the pandemic, saying that it will impact investigations, give free reign to the so-called political virus, and seriously hamper international cooperation on COVID-19. This latest war of words follows fresh speculation about a lab leak in China, which Beijing has denied repeatedly. The White House wants China to be more forthcoming. You know, China wasn't transparent enough. Uh, we have been saying that for a very long time, that China needed to provide more access to the lab. That lab is the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which the WHO visited in February. It concluded a lab leak was extremely unlikely, but did not rule it out. Well, this week, the Wall Street Journal reporting three researchers from the lab becoming sick in November 2019. That is a month before China first alerted the WHO to a mysterious pneumonia outbreak in Wuhan. As our Marx tells us what is driving the Biden administration to launch a further probe now into the origins of COVID-19. Well, I think it's certainly a response to days of questions that reporters were asking and questions that some members of Congress were raising following the publication by the Wall Street Journal of those reports. President Biden's press secretary has been asked relentlessly by reporters for several days now why he is not pushing uh, for a, a greater degree of investigation into whether uh, the laboratory in Wuhan may have been responsible for uh, COVID-19. In his statement today, it was notable uh, that he spoke about the possibility of an accident in the lab. Uh, notable also uh, that he made it clear, revealed e effectively, uh, that there is a division among his top intelligence uh, advisors as to whether COVID-19 originated as a result of an accident in that laboratory or whether it originated uh, in the wet market in Wuhan. So he's giving them 90 days to try and make a final unanimous determination. And at the White House today, uh, the president's press secretary and then some of his top public health advisers made it absolutely clear that they believe that more work now needs to be done by both the US and China. We need to get to the bottom of this and we need a completely transparent process from China. We need the WHO to assist in that matter. We don't feel like we have that now. We need to get to the bottom of this, whatever the answer may be. Because we don't know 100% what the origin is, it's imperative that we look and we do an investigation. Very interesting that Dr. Anthony Fauci is backing all of this because over uh, recent weeks he has remained sceptical about the possibility uh, that COVID-19 originated in that lab, uh, mounting pressure then on China uh, to do more to assist in the investigation. And President Biden saying uh, to his uh, intelligence chiefs, the clock's ticking. You've got 90 days to reach a conclusion and solve the mystery. A severe storm has left a trail of death and destruction in India's east coast. At least five people are dead. Tens of thousands of homes have been destroyed and more than two million people evacuated in two states.
Cyclone Yaz made landfall yesterday. It carried winds of up to 140 kilometers per hour, bringing heavy rain and high tides to coastal areas in the state. Many people were forced to flee to shelters after losing their property to floods. Maji medical achi, paper paper pete amra shuri achi. Achi amader avastha ekun khub kharaap. Jolta luke pukure puk.